Hi, this is Sean Duby, Technical Director with Windows IT Pro, and this is a short video on how to enable claims in Windows Server 2012 Active Directory. Though it's not very well known, the support of claims in Active Directory is a very important step forward for this core Microsoft product. Support of claims in AD links the Kerberos-based Windows world with the uh, claims-based authorization and authentication of the web services world. In other words, SaaS applications, uh, uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, cloud computing. A very important step forward. In this uh, version of Windows Server, Windows Server 2012, claims are supported, are used by two uh, features, most importantly, dynamic access control. First, let's take a look at where claims are stored in Active Directory. I have Server Manager up here in my test environment, and you can see there are a number of little uh, red alerts going up, which is what happens when you have a test environment and you have machines uh, going up and down. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to take a look in Active Directory Domain Services, which you can choose either here from the uh, dashboard tile or off to the left uh, and drill down into Domain Services this way. So for the sake of playing around today, we'll go into ADDS this way. Here is the domain controller for the test environment, and I'm going to right click on the domain controller and choose Add C Edit. I choose Add C Edit instead of Active Directory, Active Directory Users and Computers or Active Directory Administration Center because it allows me to look at directory partitions that aren't normally visible to those two tools. As you can see, I'm already uh, attached to the configuration partition. So let's drill down into configuration to look at the uh, claims containers. So we're going to go from here in the configuration partition down to the services container. Expand the services container and you'll see here are, are, is claims configuration, the claims configuration container. And within that are seven, seven different containers that hold uh, various aspects of claims in AD and, and also um, central access policies and central access rules, which are a critical part of dynamic access control. Before you can start manipulating claims in Active Directory, first you have to enable the support within AD. It's not uh, enabled by default. To do this, you, you do this through group policy. So here from Server Manager, we're going to go up to Tools and choose Group Policy Management. Within Group Policy Management, we'll go to the, to the Domain Controllers GPO, the Default Domain Controller Policy, Edit the Policy, and Within this policy, let's move this over so you can see a little bit better. We'll go into Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, System, and KDC. And under KDC is the particular policy that we are interested in, which is KDC support for claims, compound authentication, and Kerberos armoring. So let's edit this policy. Now, what we have here is a policy that you can that you first enable and then once you have it enabled, you can choose what level you have the policy of in, what what level of enforcement the policy will have. I won't get into the different levels of this short video. Um, you need to understand a little bit more about uh, dynamic access control to choose this correctly, what you want, what setting that you want. But essentially, the settings are not supported at all. In other words, claims uh, and compound authentication, which is the which is the support of both user and device claims, is either not supported, supported, always provide claims, or the most restrictive, which is to fail unar unarmored authentication requests. For the basic configuration, we'll simply choose Supported, 
and say OK. And we're all set. Note that you have to have at least one Windows Server 2012 domain controller to provide this to provide claim support, which also implies that you have to have obviously upgraded one uh, domain controller to Windows Server 2012, which also upgrades the Active Directory schema running AD prep, domain prep, and forest prep under the covers for you to bring your schema to the most recent level, which has support for the object classes that I just showed you in ADC Edit. Now let's take a look at how to specifically enable certain attributes as claims. Now to take an Active Directory attribute and actually uh, enable it in claims so that it can be represented to uh, web services or other applications that use claims-based access control, we will launch Active Directory Administration Center. Now in ADAC, uh, where we're going to go to is something that you'd never saw in uh, Active Directory users and computers, but a section called Dynamic Access Control. And within Dynamic Access Control, you'll actually see some similarities to what we are looking at in ADC Edit. Central Access Policy, Central Access Rules, Claim Types, Resource Properties, and Resource Property List. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Claim Types, and you'll see that there's actually already a claim there for Department. Now, in terms of what you would be using claims for, imagine you're accessing salesforce.com and the kind of access that you want to provide your users to salesforce.com may depend on what department that they're in. So you would choose department as a claim. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new claim. So we'll go into claim types, new claim type. And from here, we see a list of available Active Directory attributes to base the claim type on. So uh, for the sake of this, let's say Salesforce example, let's choose company. And here we have company, and you'll see it has the display name, the description, and the claims of this type can be issued for the user class. And so what we're going to do is simply choose OK. and we've now created a claim for company. So that's the summary of how to enable claims for an Active Directory force and how to create a claim in an Active Directory Windows Server 2012 force. There's a lot more behind this around dynamic access control, um, but this is the basic steps on how to get it done. Thank you.